seriousness it deserves. So yesterday, I'm sure you heard uh, the PS uh, uh, from the Ministry of Education uh, once again announcing that it will release that the ministry will release uh, funds to schools next week. We have lost count of the numerous times such promises have been made since the Kenya Kwanzaa regime took over. This is turning out to be a game of lies, managing the public on the one hand while setting up school heads for failure, which the ministry has now perfected. No plausible reason has been given as to why funds that should have been disbursed earlier in the term are only being disbursed towards the end of the term. If at all, they'll be disbursed. It is for this reason that we take the position that the Ministry of Education is setting up school heads and managers for ridicule, failure, and blame. In the process, our children are collateral. Whenever the Ministry of Education has come under pressure over disbursement of funds to schools, they do what they did yesterday. That is, they assemble the media, put together some figures, and announce that the money will be released the following week. Most times, it never gets done. And when it is done, it is never sufficient. It's a vicious cycle, really. Even if it were to be actualized, what the ministry announced yesterday would still amount to a mere 25% of money which is due to schools. Unfortunately, these funds are coming too little, uh, too late. Whenever the ministry announces the funds or the release of the funds, suppliers flood schools, students make demands and PTAs assume all is well, regardless of how small the amount released is or whether it actually ever gets released. The Ministry of Education is running the critical sector by setting up principals school heads and managers for failure, and then lying to learners and parents. This must stop. We are here to call out the government on the lies that have now crippled schools and exposed otherwise innocent principals, head teachers, and school managers to the wrath of parents and learners who buy into government lies that funds have been released to schools and other learning institutions. The casualty is none other than the millions of Kenyan learners who are staring at the bleak future. To say that schools are struggling uh, because of acute financial problems is a serious understatement. Currently, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration owes close to Kenya shillings 52.8 billion in free day secondary school uh, uh, fund, dating back to the year 2021. This is testament enough to the lack of commitment by the government to the future of this country's school going children. Funds are yet to be remitted to schools for Form 1 students in secondary schools whose first term is set to come to an end in a matter of weeks, in fact, two weeks, from what I gather. Equally, there is neither any commitment nor, in, nor indication from the government that when schools reopen for second term, the monies will have been disbursed. It is nothing short of a miracle, really, that the schools are open and running. However, the miracle is short-lived since school administrators are running out of tricks to convince suppliers to keep supplying food items and learning materials to their schools. Feeding the students is an uphill task for the school administrators. And for some schools, it is just a matter of time before there is student unrest due to hunger. We heard the PS uh, lament that this capitation money is not meant for feeding children or, or pupils. Well, he must be made to understand that there's a ripple effect. When you don't release capitation money, it affects every other school program. Okay? Directly or indirectly. 
in a bid to make ends meet, some schools have resorted to either increasing boarding fees, food rationing, or changing the students' menu altogether to make ends meet. The situation is dire as for the first time since 2005. Parents have been left with no choice but to buy exercise books for their children. Further, a number of schools are contemplating closing school earlier than scheduled and doing away with end-of-term tests because they can no longer afford basics like stationery. Some school administrators admit that they are forced to pay to play hide and seek with school suppliers who are constantly and rightfully so uh, <coughs> demanding payments from these schools. In other cases, schools have resorted to slashing budget for extracurricular activities. It is as pathetic as it is chaotic. The present state of affairs in our schools is a great shame to this nation. The net effect of all current ongoings is that schools will resort to provision of compromised basic education, which will have incalculable ramifications on the status of education in Kenya and the future of Kenyan children. In fact, the impact of this unfortunate turn of events is already being felt across the country in the form of mass failures. In last year's KCAC, for instance, over 49,000 candidates scored grade E. As you know, grade E is normally scored between uh, marks of 0 to 5. This trend of increasing failure rates in high school has persisted for the last three years, with 2023 being the worst performed KCSC examination in the recent past. The ministry is silent about this because they know poor funding is a key contributor to such mass failures. Amid all the chaos in the education sector, the government is still not transparent about this matter and has resorted to open lies on the matter. In the current financial year, schools have only received a paltry Kenya shillings 7,300 out of the required Kenya shillings 22,200 per annum. Other school officials say the figure disbursed is as low as 3,800 per annum. In any event, whatever the figure, it is way lower than the stipulated Kenya shillings 22,200. Given the foregoing, we demand that the government immediately stops the lies and releases the entire Kenya shillings 52.8 billion owed to schools. On the one hand, the government must also embark on timely disbursement of capitation funds with the payment schedule made public to learners. On the other hand, the Ministry of Education must immediately seize the habit of withholding part of the school capitation without good reason. As a matter of fact, the current capitation amount was arrived at way back in 2017 and must therefore be adjusted upwards to take into account the rising inflation rate. We are challenging the Kenya Kwanzaa regime to come out and tell Kenyans whether it has done away with the free primary and free secondary education. Because from the look of things, this seems to be the case. We are calling on teachers and parents to stop struggling in fear and to speak out boldly for our children whose future is being stolen by this regime. Neither parents nor the head teachers should cover up for the government. Let it be known to all and sundry that things are not working in the education sector. School heads have run out of ideas to run schools without money, and parents cannot afford the money that they were in fact promised that the government would cut for. The Kenya Kwanzaa must own up to the mess that is in the education sector and do what is right for our children and our hardworking teachers. So that's basically the end of the statement. And uh, it is self-explanatory that if nothing is done urgently, we are likely to see a crisis of monumental proportions, not only in our high schools, but in the entire education sector, <coughs> that something is not adding up. The government continues to promise release of capitation funds and which funds never get to schools. What is happening between the promise and the and the National Treasury, 
is something that is beyond our imagination. So thank you very much. My colleagues here will chip in. Makali is uh, very brief. If you look at the schedules, the agreement is term one you lease fifty percent, term two you lease thirty percent, term three you do twenty percent. That's normally the agreement in terms of how you lease the resources. And I think the challenge is we are facing as a country is a situation where the government is not able to adhere to those ag agreed targets with the, the principles. Uh, as the leader has said, any country which plays around with the education sector plays around with their future. So what we are seeing as leaders is a situation whereby today we have all done very well and everybody in this room can agree with me, but our children I actually see by those Kenyans who have not read the CBAC curriculum, and I'm sure majority of you when I look at you, you are in that category, that what is going to happen is 10 years to come or 15 years to come, we'll start now facing challenges as a result of what is happening today in our education sector. So it is very important that the government adheres to the agreement with the principals or the, the stakeholders. And the other important bit which we need to look at as a country is a situation of prioritization in terms of release of money. Because if you analyze what is being released by Treasury, a lot of, well, many of the other sectors are getting their money in time. So it just tells you how much, in terms of value, this government values the education sector. We all know it takes the lion's share of the budget, but it is very important that the funds are released to our schools so that our children get quality education. Otherwise, we will all be lamenting in, that, in about 10 years, time to come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We shall send you the soft copies. Soft copies. Catherine Omanyo.